everyone today we're at San Gabriel Fire Department So he, he'll bite on my command. When they see the bite suit, it's like a giant toy. So we have other tools that we train with where the dog doesn't get fixated on something in a bite suit. So we don't want the dog to go out and not engage in the real bad guy if he's not wearing a bite suit. The bite suit is just a giant toy for him to bite. Officer Garcia was just a big squeaky toy. That's our legal. One more question. He is a Belgian Malinois. A lot of people haven't heard of that um, breed, but he's a Belgian, Belgian Malinois. They're not too common here. Uh, my personal opinion is the best bloodline of these dogs come from Europe. Okay, puppy needs to go and relax a little bit so that he can come out and say hi later. But thank you for coming. Thanks, Paul. All right, see you in 20 minutes. Come on out, get your hot dogs. Ten more minutes. We got another presentation next to the hose tower in front of the fire engine.
and we need to figure out how to get to them. How can we get to them? Anybody, anybody, quick. Right, all those are correct. So we gotta get through here, get to our patient. Is there a fire in there? Oh no, okay, we better get these guys going because we got a fire going now. Oh yeah, look at the smoke. Okay, let's get them going before the station burns down. Guys, go ahead. So this is Brandon Clark, he's one of our newer firefighters. He's using a saw to get through the corrugated metal.
show up. You have the paramedics show up. You have an engine show up. You have this other fire truck looking thing with all these ladders on it show up. We can see history moves. What we've done is taken all five people. That's not counting patient care, so that would be seven people. So when you see us show up at an accident with a bunch of people, because we need them. If you see us show up at a uh, somebody's house with a fire engine and a paramedic in it, and everyone always says, how come you send the engine when somebody is just not feeling it? And that's because we need all those people. We need all those people to do CPR, chest compression, get the breath through the nail bag and everything else. So this kind of shows you why we need to take it. Okay, why don't we just get rid of what we have here? Yes.
Anytime we do something like this and we're training and we're showing, we have to do it just like we would do it for a life. And so there is a person in there, the way that they've done it, hopefully it does not cause any more injury to the person. Right? Okay. What would we do if the car was about to explode? Oh, wait. Yeah, they got it off. Now you got a convertible. How about that, guys? So, that's a good question. What would we do if the car was about to explode? We would try and keep it from exploding. We would do everything to do that. We'd have a hose line. We'd be spraying the car down. If it was on fire, we'd be working very quickly just to throw the person out. It doesn't matter if they're injured or not, we get them out as quickly as possible, get them away from the car before it catches on fire or it's close. Alright, how about a hand of applause? Well, hand of applause? Well, you know what it is. Yeah, that's it. Alright, so Brandon Clark, Brandon Clark, thank you. Engineer Miller, thank you. This is Pastor Bay, thank you. 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 And firefighter Tally. Thank you guys. So, 1 o'clock, 15 minutes, back door, and we'll give you a tour of the station. Come on, guys. Station tour. Go ahead, make yourself come on in, make yourself comfy. We've got a lot, we got a huge group, so. Hi everyone, I'm Firefighter Tally. My co-worker right, or colleague right behind there is gonna be Firefighter Pasqua. So we're just gonna do a quick uh, station tour. If you have any questions, go, uh, feel free to go ahead and ask. Um, so as you can see here, we have our gym. Uh, as part of our, we work out right now. As part of our requirements, uh, we are um, have to stay, stay, you know, tip top shape to be able to do our job and do it uh, efficiently and make sure we don't get tired throughout our job. So we always uh, have a set day, uh, time and day when we actually do a workout as a, as a group to make sure that we're ready for any sort of incidents. So if we need to throw a ladder, pick up a patient, pick up a firefighter, carry all the tools that I don't know if you guys saw out there, but those tools are pretty heavy at times. So. Um, you know, we have to be pretty um, uh, in tip-top shape to be able to perform these duties and stuff like that. So, does anyone have any questions for in here by chance? How do we stay healthy? Yeah, thanks, bro. So we do like we uh, we have like a set time for when we stay. You know, we do our exercises. We make sure that we stay healthy by staying fit, uh, lifting weights, or doing cardio. Make sure our stamina is good as well as eating right, uh, you know, have the right nutrition, things like that. Go for it. What's my name? I'm John. Hi. You guys having fun? All right. You have a question? Do we have poles to go down? Is that what you said? Unfortunately, we don't have that here. So we do. there are stations that are second, that are two stories that do have it. They also have slides that firefighters can go down now. So they're trying to they're trying to actually make it a little bit more efficient on our, our bodies. So we're not you know hitting our knees too much and stuff. So all right, next we're gonna move forward. We're gonna go right into our day room and kitchen area. So in here is our day, we call it our day room. So we have our debriefs that we do during the day in the morning time. So we try to figure out our plan for the day, uh, what type of training we have going on. Um, who's on uh, we also go through our staffing to see who's on our, uh, gonna be on our ambulance and our engine as well. And then we also find out who's gonna be um, up north. And then, like I said, we try, to, we try to go through our duties, our training in the morning and try to just get a basic idea of what we have going on besides running calls and uh, being out there with the community. We also do our own uh, cooking. So we actually do, we'll do lunch or dinner as a crew. We'll uh, pitch in and help out any way we can. 
just to make sure that we all stay, uh, that we're fed and have our three meals of the day. And then we also have our training time, so right here we'll actually use for, uh, for training, so we'll put a little video up there, see what type of training we have going on, and, uh, and just try to keep learning on, on new tools and knowledge that we have going on too. Yes? What do we usually eat? Yeah. Ooh, good question. Uh, for me, my favorite's like cheeseburgers, so Ooh, I'll go with cheeseburgers. I love cheeseburgers. Yeah? Oscar doesn't know. What is it? Is it fire in the mountain? Oh, yeah. Fire in the mountain? So if we have a fire in the mountain, it depends if they need extra resources actually. So if they do need extra resources, we'll put up a thing called a strike, or not us, but the, they'll ask for a strike team where we'll actually uh, be part of a team with other agencies nearby, so Alhambra, uh, Pasadena, Arcadia, things like that. We'll actually wow. become part of them and go on to a strike team and go assist them if there is a fire in the mountains or a fire up north or another brush fire near like Malibu or something like that. So we'll actually work alongside them too sometimes. Let's get them. Uh, oh, if there's a fire in the forest? Yeah. So we'll actually go out there and help with like, for us, we're mainly we'll help with like structures. So people's homes, um, we'll help make sure that helicopters are filled up with water. Uh, we'll make sure other engines are filled up with water. We'll actually actually go and try to fight fire ourselves. So it's a lot of fun. I got a question too. I have a driven all. On those ones? You have those? I have one. This one's a fire fighter to give Oh, very cool. I got it in a cheap store, twenty dollars. Those are very. Uh, those are the old ones too. So I got lucky in that one. Very cool. All right, so we're gonna actually go through the store right here, and then we're gonna make our way to the next one. I'll actually open it up, and we'll all go right in there. This one's gonna be a little tight, so. Maybe a little tight. So, uh, this is actually our locker room or changing room for all of us. Uh, so this is, each ship has, or each firefighter actually has their own locker for their set gear for the day. Um, and just make sure you have, you know, good hygiene and keep up with everything. Um, one of our biggest things is staying healthy. So part of being healthy is having good hygiene for us. Make sure that we stay fit for and ready for any type of call that comes our way. So, do you have a question? Yeah, I had a question. Uh, so, do you guys have any women in this department? Unfortunately, not our de uh, on, uh, in our department. Uh, we, it is open. We don't, um, but we actually haven't had any apply. Uh, we actually, uh, a few years ago, we actually had a, a female firefighter, but I believe she transferred to Alhambra. Um, but she was a part of our association a few years ago. So how does that work with the, with the guys in this case? We, just we actually have another uh, set of ba uh, uh, bathroom quarters and stuff, so it's totally separate and okay. indifferent. And it actually goes along with our living quarters, which we'll be going through. It's actually our, uh, so each person actually gets their own bedroom. So they have their own bed, their own uh, closet, or closet and cabinet, so they keep all their stuff in there. So everyone stays basically separated from each other. Nice. If we did have uh, female firefighters that did uh, um, get hired on with us, yeah. that would keep everyone separated um, and have their own like living quarters and things like that too. Okay. So, you know, um, uh, but yeah, uh, like I said, we did have one a few years ago and I believe she made the decision to tra uh, transfer out to Alhambra just because it's a bigger agency. And, yeah. um, all that. and we have people actually transfer out and stuff. And, yeah, because everybody you know, they're yeah. they want to be closer. Probably. People, people want to be closer to people want to be closer to their families, yeah. uh, things like that. So. Uh, we actually do have a few cadets that are females, and we're hoping later on when we open up that they'll apply and get picked up too. So it'd be awesome. So we're actually going to go into the living quarters real quick. I'm picking me. I'm picking. I guess kind of spread out. It's going to be a little earth type, but it's going to be a little right? Unfortunately, these walls are very thin, so you'll hear everyone snore. <laughs> so. Nice, you snore too much. Just to show where we actually stay, so this is actually our home from home. So you end up being very close with the, with you know, with everyone that you work with. You can create a really good bond with each other. It's like your best friend from home. So it's like uh -huh. you can create a second family. They become part of your family. Um, in my opinion, a lot of people describe the fire service as becoming, I mean, joining a second family. But uh, what I came to find out is that 
your family just became a lot bigger. So um, you, you, create, you create a really big bond with them, especially living with one another, uh, cooking with one another. Uh, we work 48-hour uh, shifts, so we're here for two days straight. And then that's actually... So that right there is actually our... Um, alarm system. So we're part of a do-go. This will actually let us know everything lights up red and that we're going to actually get a call. It'll actually inform us if... So that is our actual dispatch center right there. So they'll actually let us know which engine is, uh, engine is responding, responding to the incident, what type of incident it is, and if the ambulance is going to be a part of it. So it'll allow, let us know if it's a medical emergency, it'll let us know if it's going to be a fire, you know, if there's a flooding, literally everything. It'll, they'll tell us everything. So it'll go off during the nighttime too, so there's actually one in each room. There's actually one in each room. So this is actually one of our rooms too. So, oh, so that's, that's what my question was going to be too. So is that, is that the loudest that it gets? Or? No, there's actually one in the room and it when, it's, louder. when it's, it's louder and these lights actually get brighter at night. So during, it'll wake you up. At first I was actually afraid when I first started. I was like, I'm not going to wake up. I'm a heavy sleeper. So, um, but it'll wake you up. It'll let you. You'll be able, you'll be aware of which yeah which engine's going to be responding, if the ambulance is responding, and what type of call you're going to actually be responding on. So uh, it's pretty cool actually. So like I said, there's one in each room. So like, like, like they look for you guys. Hmm? Like, you, like you learn. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's pretty quick and it's less. Hi. The question is simple. Just trying to get a little crowded. Get a little crowded. All right, so we'll actually head out that way. Actually, that's just going to take us back into our app thing where we actually store all our engines. So if anyone has any more questions, feel free. So those are our names for our firefighters. So What's your name? A, B, and C. I'm John. Everybody have their hot dogs, you can come on over over here and watch it, and have a snack, and a nice little demo. So come on over. All right. So we're going to have our fire extinguisher. We're going to talk about how to put out a fire with a fire extinguisher. Does anybody know what the acronym PASS stands for? What does the letter P stand for? Does anybody have a guess? Pull. Pull? Is somebody here, down here pull or push? Pull, that's right. So the first letter P is pull. We're going to pull that pin in the fire extinguisher. Okay. After that, what's the aim pass? Aim? I can't hear anybody. There we go. Aim. We're just full from our hot dogs, huh? Aim, right? What are we going to aim at? The fire. At the car? No. At the fire. Yeah, right, right. Sorry, my mistake. Fire, right? We want to aim at the base of the fire. And then what's the S pass? Squeeze! Who said that? Who said that? Okay. Awesome. Why don't you come up over here? Come on up. Give me those over down. Great. And then finally, what's the last S in pass? Sweet. Back and forth, side to side at the base of the fire to put it all out, right? Are you guys ready? Are we ready? Are we ready to do the pass? Are you nervous? Yes. 
you don't look at this. Bye.